All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this artist spotlight. Today, I have an incredible, incredible two uh, dynamic duo <laughs> artists uh, and entrepreneur, I would say. Uh, Adriana, amazing. <laughs> Um, and Thank you. Uh, welcome, welcome to, to this chat. And uh, we, we're going to talk about the two of you and uh, getting to know you a little bit better and talk about what, you, what you've been up to and what, what you're offering. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for having us. We're so excited. Yeah. So this Thank is cool. Um, so to start, please tell, tell us about yourself and how, how you guys meet. Uh, and maybe the background or how, how to become an artist and an entrepreneur. Uh, maybe you could start with, with uh, Adriana. A, A first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she has the double A. She beats me in both I aspects. Know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Either right. way. Yeah. I'm the elder one too, so there's that. No, I'm oh. there. I mean, I am, but. <laughs> okay. Elders first. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. So where do we get started? Uh, so I am a Puerto Rican artist. I was born and raised in Puerto Rico in the Caribbean, in case you all are not familiar. Um, and I moved to the States about 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it's been challenging because when I left school, I went to school for business mm -hmm. um, and marketing when I left and came to the States, I entered the corporate world that had nothing creative to do with it. So <laughs> I'm going, I'm going like back and forth, right? But I've always painted, I've always been creative since I was little. So it's kind of that hard transition of all the time I grew up in PR, you know, in Puerto Rico, you know, I was always painting and drawing and being creative and being around other artists. And then I crossed the pond, so to speak, join the corporate environment and my creativity just starts drying up, right? It, it, there's a lot of pressure, there's a lot of stress and I'm just kind of struggling to even finish one painting, right? So there was that bit of a struggle for many years and uh, several years ago, I just got to this point of, you know, I'm in a good job. I love my coworkers. I actually enjoy what I do, but this is not my calling. This is not what I'm meant to do. Um, and it took a lot of planning and it took a lot of steps, but I quit my job to become a full-time artist. <laughs> so that's, <Yeah. laughs> that's kind of where we are. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny. Cause I actually met Adriana. It was like the week before she was putting in her <laughs> week notice, which oh, okay. I can go into that too. So I was like, who is this woman? What is she doing? She's like, I'm putting in my two weeks notice. I'm being a full-time artist. I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, which is so funny because my background is very different. I'm from Maryland. And so I feel like I took almost the more like societally traditional academia path, like just doing everything on the checklist that society tells you you're supposed to do. So I grew up in a super supportive family of my creativity, went to um, college for art, got a bachelor in fine art, bachelor's in art history, got my master's in exhibition design, did the internships, ran the student art gallery, like all of those oh. things that they tell you that you should do when yeah. you're in school. I was like, check, check, check. That was my focus to be like, the on paper best student I could be. But the thing is, then you graduate and there's no one telling you what you're supposed to be doing anymore. And you have total control over your life, your creative career. And I think all of us can agree, there's so many different variations and paths that you can take as an artist. Mm -hmm. You can do it part-time, you can do it full-time, you can focus on online sales or gallery or products like there's so many different avenues and so similar to Adriana after I graduated I got a full-time day job it was more focused on um, graphic design and production using different industrial machinery which was really really fun so still relatively creative um, but not in the fine art way that I really yeah. wanted to be working on it um, so that was around 2019 I was thinking kind of in a similar mindset of Adriana, like, I like this job, I'm good at it, I'm 
like capable of having a future here, but it doesn't like fire me up when I wake up in the morning. So um, I found this art gallery in Raleigh. We are both artists based in Raleigh, North Carolina. And so there was a gallery downtown that said, oh, we have monthly art critiques, come bring a piece of artwork and fellow artists can give you feedback. You can ask questions and use it kind of as a networking opportunity. So I was like, you know what? I don't know any other artists in the city. Let me just show up and see what it's about. And so that's the first critique was the day I met Adriana. Okay. And as legend has it at this point, I guess, like we ended up after the critique, we were there for like an hour. And then we stood outside in the freezing cold because we just couldn't stop talking and brainstorming about ideas for like two hours. <laughs> it was like 30 degrees out. I'm like, okay, one more thing. Okay, one more thing. <laughs> so we got you know, like when you meet another beginning. artist. Yeah. Yeah. And they're on the right? same wavelength. And you're like, what about this? Oh, that's so cool. What about this? That is so cool. And you're just yeah. like, nice. I that's mean, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you guys in in North Carolina right now? Yeah, right? yeah, okay. yeah. And we're in downtown Raleigh. You guys in the same uh, studio in the same building? Yeah. yeah. So same at building. the time, yeah, at the time that we met, we were both working out of our um out of our houses. I was in an apartment. Adriana has a house, and so we both had aspirations of having downtown art studios. Yeah. And then little did we know, within eight months of meeting, we both had our eyes set on the similar space. Mm -hmm. um, which is called Art Space in downtown Raleigh, which okay. is a series of community center and gallery and artist residency. So now we have studios down there right yeah, around yeah. the corner from each other, which is way too much fun. Okay. I feel like it shouldn't be allowed. <laughs> it's so great. So, so, you, so you guys can visit each other's space all the time. All uh, the time. Kind of. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it can be like, I'm working on this painting. Can you come over and oh, look okay. at this? Yeah. Or... Yeah. You know, I mean, Jackie may come over. Yeah, yeah. Jackie likes to joke. I have an art supply store inside <laughs> my studio, so she'll be like, "Do you have this medium?" And I'm like, "Yeah, probably." Here you go. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's that nice, you know, in person community. Or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it's amazing, and it's not just us. There's about uh -huh. 30 artists in this building, yeah. and many of them, like us, are very sharing. Very. What cool. about this? Do you need this? Mm -hmm. I'll lend you things. I mean, it's yeah. it's very community centered. That's great. And and speaking of ideas, so you have so many ideas. <laughs> uh, what are the things that you you've been doing right now? Uh, I I know you have. Well, why don't you tell me what you, what you guys been up to? Yeah. So I guess I'll start with the first one. The first project that we were really brainstorming was when we moved into our studios in downtown Raleigh. It was like middle of shutdown so july 2020 and so we had always oh, wow. thought about like what can we do to connect with more artists and share our work with the world so we've always been very like big thinkers just mm -hmm. abundance of wanting to share as much as we can with the most number of people and fellow artists as we could mm -hmm. and so that's when the idea of starting a podcast started because we would touch base like basically every single week with audiobooks we were reading, podcast episodes that we love, different resources. And then once we opened to the public and had artists visiting us, we found that we were like talking to them a lot of, about the same topics or they had a lot of the same questions. Right. And so this way we thought, well, what if we just start a podcast? We talk a million miles a minute every single week, <laughs> 20 times a day anyway. So like, why yeah. don't we record some of these conversations? Because we had so many artists who, if they were there for our conversations, like, man, you really inspired us or you made me think of things differently. And again, we're doing it already. So we might as well record yeah. it and share it with the world. So the, the podcast, you've been doing the podcast for how long now? Um, about two months now. Yeah. And so it's called the Art Studio Insights Podcast. It's on all streaming platforms as well as YouTube. Obviously being visual artists, there is bound to be episodes that are very visually dominant. So we wanted to make sure YouTube was on there. Um, oh. So yeah, we launched on May 4th. Mm -hmm. um, may the 4th be with you. Oh, Star Wars yeah. Day. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's an easy day to remember. It'll be a fun anniversary to celebrate. Okay. It'll be a good anniversary. Okay. Yeah. And it's been so great um, to really, yeah, connect with more artists and get people's feedback. And we have a lot of exciting topics that we're excited to talk about on there. And, and the new episodes come out every what? 
every Tuesday. Tuesday. Every Tuesday. And then you, so, okay, so you record the things every, every week then? Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. You guys talk all the time anyway, so why not record it? <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, so we um, kind of similar to this, we kind of have like a built into our weekly schedule of, okay, on this day, from this time to this time, it's podcast recording. And we really like doing that too, because then we can make sure that the topics are really applicable to what we're both going through or timely in terms of um, if it's seasonal content specific or someone like a listener has a question, we can respond yeah. to it quickly. Yeah. Um, at least for now, that's the stage that we're in. So we want to make sure that we're sharing authentically, like things that we're really thinking about. Yeah. What are what are the topics that you've been been talking about on the podcast? So a lot of the topics have to do with things like creative warm ups, uh, mm -hmm. using technology and the art making process is mm -hmm. probably my favorite. But yeah, you know, okay. a little biased. Okay. Here. Um, but like making art while you're on vacation. I mean, we just have a, a whole big range of topics, but yeah. we've catered them or we've selected them, even though again we're both visual artists, we yeah. want it to be applicable basically to creatives, regardless right. of what field they're in, because we're all it's we're all facing a lot of the same challenges anyways, maybe yeah. in slightly different ways, but one of the things we're doing through it, our unofficial, one of our unofficial motives, if you will, is sharing it forward. And we're really, really big about that as mm -hmm. we've built our careers, our professional careers. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of generous artists in our lives that have given yeah. us advice mm -hmm. freely where we can say, I have a question about this. I'm stuck. What would you do? And they'll sit down with you and actually explain things. And they will, you know, in that spirit of, sounds cliche, but it's true. In that spirit of community over competition, they won't look at you as competition. They'll say, oh, I was there too. I'm going to help you out, right? So for us, that's kind of part of like the spirit of the podcast is us doing the same thing. It's yeah. You know, instead of sitting one-on-one, -on -one, we're taking all this information that we've been receiving, you know, yeah. filtering it down to the best of the best that we can find and then yeah. passing it on to other creatives. Yeah. And it seemed like the perfect platform for that. And then Adriana, you are, as far as I remember, you, you are a pretty techie person. You, you like technology or both of you maybe like technology. <laughs> I like technology, but Adriana does better with technology. I don't think technology likes me very much. Okay. I just yeah blame it, it on blame it on the technology. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I was I was that kid, you know, like I was in marketing school and I wanted to do art, but I also built my own computers back in the day and what? I've always okay. been tinkering yeah, about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I'm I'm that person. Um, so oh. even in my jobs, which is really funny, and it actually you know plays well into what we're going to talk to here in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. even in my jobs I was always the one of the people that they would always ask can you help me with the spreadsheet or something mm -hmm. happened with this computer and IT is too busy can you help me and I'm like I'm not IT but I'll help yeah. how I can you know um so even throughout my corporate life I've always you know had those links back you know, mm -hmm. you know to mm -hmm. helping people number one and then helping with technology yeah. for sure I don't know it's something I'm really passionate about I just I, I think I think this, that's really cool because you know as an artist you use a right brain yeah right brain a lot and then the, your left brain kind of you know uh, balancing those out a little bit um, and then leveraging your te technology passion into yeah <laughs> even you know especially now with all online and uh, all these application software that we need to work with um, you yeah. know it's perfect. For that so that's that's great um so yeah exactly and i feel like that was one thing that like adriana and i bonded over really early on like even mm -hmm. the, the first day we met at the gallery of really we're both relatively type a mm -hmm. and really seeing the bigger picture in terms of the art world or like those business side of the art career if you want to build one and that was a huge hole that i felt like was missing coming from the academia world. Like I absolutely loved art school and all the opportunities that came from it, but it really is focused on your artwork and the skills and the techniques and the history mm -hmm. and not necessarily business, technology, marketing. 
And that's where we bonded over really seeing a gap there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. So let's, let's, let's talk about the, the, another, another idea. What? (laughs) So you have the podcast going, so everybody go check out the podcast. Um, You can, um, so how do we get the, the podcast? How do people get your podcast? So they can access it through YouTube. Uh, okay. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, any any podcast app uh, should have it. But nice. yeah, if you want to see us and our funny facial expressions, you too. And then the okay, and then the name of it again. It's so, Art Studio Insights. Art Studio Insights. So check that out. Uh, Art Studio Insights. So podcast. So you have, you know, art making your own things already, and then you chat, <laughs> and then you put it on podcasts, and and you have some extra time i guess what are you doing uh the, the latest project you, you've been up to is- yeah adriana why don't you dive in with the level of artist community there so okay so in doing the podcast we've gotten a lot of feedback right and it's fantastic but it's mostly a one-way conversation right like listening to the radio in many ways we'll mm-hmm. get listener questions we can react to them but it's mostly a one-way street, right? Which is fine. I mean, it's fantastic. You can yeah. multitask while you listen to podcasts. It's great. Um, but what Jackie and I started finding out, and I think this is in part due to the fact that we are in a public-facing studio. I think yeah. it'd be different if it was closed. But where we are, we have several days of the week where people off the street can come in, right? Mm-hmm. Kids, teenagers, adults, everybody, right? And what Jackie and I started noticing as we were talking is she and I were fielding some of the same exact questions. They usually had to do with marketing, with business, with technology. And we're like, wait a minute, did you get questions about, yeah, me too. Wait, hold on. So then it turned into how can we take this or evolve this to the next level in which now there is a community component and now we can actually have a larger conversation. So it's not just what her and I have found out through others, it's also adding in, hey, Nino, you know, coming over, right? What do you know about like, say website platforms, for example, right? And, you know, well, how about your experience, Jackie, and my experience, right? And now it's more than just, us to you know delivering some information to you now it's an actual back and forth it's it's a little bit more of a synergistic community right like it it, there's there's something for everybody and we can all learn from each other so that's that's kind of where we're like okay we got to put our heads together what can we do to take it to the next part in the fun the next level (laughs) yeah exactly level up level up Okay. Yeah. And I kind of think of it, I was like, like Adriana was saying, the podcast being like, we're telling you about our experiences and sharing what we know, but inside the membership is where you can create that network of fellow career-minded artists. And then we're also going to be not just sharing with you what we know, but also showing you. So here's the exact template that we use for, let's say contracts or various spreadsheets and really showing you not just the idea about it or what you should have on your business art brain radar, but really this is exactly what we do. And this is what other career minded artists do too. really having it be a melting pot of experiences. Because like I was saying, right when I got out of college, it was, there are so many different paths. So we're not even saying this is the correct path because there is no correct path. It's all different, but here's a melting pot where all career minded artists can come together like sift out all that random noise from different industries or other professionals where it might not apply to the real world and yeah. get that like really rich information and resources. Nice. Yeah. So, so you just uh, launched this um, platform. Uh, when, when did you launch it? A couple of days ago? <laughs> Yeah, so we launched um, June 29th, and we have open enrollment for our founding members. So it'll be open for two weeks, so until July 13th. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have a website, www.levelupartist.com. And so that's where you can find all the information um, about the membership and also reach out to us if you have any questions about it and join if you would like. Yeah, I, ch- I checked them out. Uh, really cool. <laughs> I love it. Um, so if you guys um, interested, please, please uh, you know, 
check them out and 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 see if that's uh, the right thing for you, which I think it will. Um, <laughs> yeah. A anything anything else you guys want to tell us about? So this is you've been busy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, other than other than um, membership and your podcast, you're also still doing your art. Uh, pretty much full, <laughs> full time, all right. Uh, so this is exciting to see, uh, but. Yeah, definitely. Adriana, why don't you tell about the Community Canvas project in case there's any locals listening or maybe they want to start a similar project. Is that the, the canvas yeah. outside your your studio or I think I see. There is one outside my studio and yeah. there's a few others, but it's a project that I started with my studio mate, Barb. Mm -hmm. And essentially what we do is we wanted to make it where th there's several objectives, right? But one of them is, you know, accessibility, right? So wow. sometimes you walk into something like a gallery, right? It may feel, you know, distant and, or even into studios, you're in someone's for, you know, kind of like their sanctuary, their space. I don't know. There might feel like kind of a distance between you, the artist, the art itself. So by doing a community campus, it's a way to invite anybody, you know, any member of the public to say, look, here's the space, this is free. You're welcome to interact with some of the artwork that other folks in the community have done. And at the very end of it, right, we're gonna do several campuses. You know, right. these funds go back to help out the community, but it helps to show folks like, look, you can do this, it doesn't matter if you paint stick figures, like do stick figures or not. Uh, uh, like this is accessible. Everyone can start. And then on the flip side of that, it's also an educational tool, right? Because some, you know, some folks will be like, oh, art is this thing. And I wasn't born with the talent for it. I'm an engineer. Yeah. I don't paint. So yeah. it's also a way of saying like, <laughs> no, anybody can do art. Now, the big difference, right, between taking that art and it's just fun and it's just a hobby, which is amazing, of course, yeah. and actually turning it into a professional career, there's some things in between, right? And for starters, yeah. to make, you know, what you may consider decent art, which is subjective, right? I have to behold it. <laughs> but there's a lot of things that need to go in between, but it mostly takes hard work and practice are two of the main things and, and passion, right? Tenacity. Mm -hmm. um so it's kind of a way of helping people you know kind of bridge that gap and demystify the process a little bit because then they go oh i didn't think i could paint and it's like no you can't anybody can. yeah yeah um it's how far do you want to take it and if you don't want to take it further than just playing around that's fine too like mm -hmm. it's just fun so 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 this is like a, a wall of um small canvases or something like that They're big They're, it's usually oh, a big yeah. canvas canvas like a yeah. three feet by four feet and yeah, I let them choose paint colors and brushes and they just go and do whatever they want. And yeah. uh, we will set a theme. So each canvas, generally there will be another artist involved. One of them is with Jackie, surprise, surprise. <laughs> and you know, the, the artist will help set the theme of the canvas and people get to react to it. Um, right. So we, you know, the one with Jackie is gonna be more geometric. We had one that had some female nudes, taste female nudes um kid friendly yeah nudes, i should say okay um, there's one actually speaking of kids that they loved all based on monsters so it was all eyeballs and teeth and claws i mean uh, it was a hit so um yeah we have cool different one. themes going and mm -hmm. yeah people get to paint on it but yeah. but the, the canvas is divided by grid so you can you, you have this space for you to not always which is free, not uh, always. free okay free form type of Paint yeah, and like an appetizer for them to, to taste like you know yeah you know, exactly and it's super yeah. cool like especially like Adriana was saying like let's say that monster one for example it kind of started as just like big blocks of color and then let's say a seven year old comes in and just does a circle and then maybe a teenager's like oh that looks like an eyeball so they draw the eyeball in it and then someone will come add like a highlight into the pupil of the eyeball and like it's cool like they painted a circle didn't think it would become the eye of this huge monster and mm -hmm. it's really cool kind of having people do that reaction yeah. obviously as you get more and more participants it yeah. you can kind of sense the theme more or see the direction it's going in mm -hmm. um but it's cool kind of seeing that reaction of what people decide okay. to think yeah 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 
Well, <clears throat> I think the the biggest thing I like about you guys is that um, again, you you focusing more on the, in the in the sharing component of art making. Um, again, it's not about, like you said; it's not about competition. It's more about community. Yeah. Uh, it's it's um, and then and then sh and then show what that really means. It's not just lip service, you know. Um, right. So, so that's why you know I thought, well. I wanna, I like you guys, this is a good, you know, <laughs> the core of it has a good intention. So it's, it's really, really, really cool. Um, so before we end it, um, can you can you tell us again about your membership, like your main goal of that, if if, if people uh, miss that, uh, but just, just a snippet of what is it that you are, um, you're looking for um, uh, to, to share? Yeah. Yeah, I can say it in a few words and then Jackie, you can expand on it. Sounds great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if I just put it in the fewest amount of words humanly possible, this is business support for career minded artists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that's the simplest way I can put it. If you want to turn your art into a business, yeah. this is what it's what it's all about. But Jackie, please, right, exactly. Please so it, it is a monthly membership, kind of yeah. similar to the one that you have, you know, um, so it'll be a monthly membership, you can pay annually as well to receive a discount. Um, but it'll be both an education platform and a community platform in one. Um, we know some other artists who host on Facebook, but we are doing it through Mighty Networks. So it's basically like your creative hub online um, where you'll be able to connect with other artists from all over the country. Um, we're also going to have weekly live calls, video content, educational resources, um, yeah. and all of that information is listed on www.levelupartist.com. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like Adriana was saying, really wanting to connect with artists who have that desire. They have a big goal in mind that mm -hmm. they might feel that they are missing something or they might have a self-doubt of if it's actually possible because as all of us know, unless you're really surrounded by fellow creatives who acknowledge that your goals are even possible or if you've never known any other artist that is further than where you are now, it's almost hard to think about what does selling online even look like? What does that take? Where do I start? What does becoming a full-time artist look like? And yeah. really surrounding yourself with those people so that you can almost level up your business and just level up your dreams with the resources and support that you'll need to actually make it happen. That's why you call it level up. Level up. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, that's cool. Uh, well, well thanks, thanks again for all the time uh, today. It's it's great to to hear uh, from you and what what's you what's going on with you guys. So it's it's very inspiring. So, oh, thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Okay, I'll see you around. Okay. Awesome. Bye. Bye. <laughs>